Two more days until Florida's primary election should be complete. A final interview from the campaign trail with former Governor Charlie Crist, hoping to be the Democratic nominee in 2022. Plus, conservative Michael Waltz doesn't agree with the new legislation designed to solve the inflation crisis. Why he says it won't work. And we're getting to know more about the new president at UNF, his roots in Africa, and his hopes for the student body on This Week in Jacksonville. Glad to have you with us today. This Tuesday is Florida's primary. The top race this time around seems to be that Democratic nomination for governor in Florida. Former Governor Charlie Chris joined me here at the station earlier this week and explained why he wants that job back. I think experience matters. And, you know, I've been your governor. I've been your attorney general. I've been your commissioner of education. And I know Florida, and I love Florida. And I think it's real important that going against Ron DeSantis is not gonna be easy. I think we all are aware and realize that. I think we want the most experienced, the most ready for prime time candidate to be able to take him on and make sure we have uh, a good win in November. So still looking at the Democratic primary right now, but as you look ahead to November, Democrat hasn't won as governor since Lawton Childs 28 years ago. What changes this time from your perspective? Well, we have to look at four years ago, I think, is where we should start, Kent, because when Ron DeSantis got elected against Andrew Gillum, it was the smallest gubernatorial election victory in the history of our state. It was 0.4 of 1%, about 30,000 votes is all. So to say that things are not in play is just not accurate. And recent polling indicates that, too. I mean, in some, we're ahead of him by a point. He's ahead of us by a point. So it's, it's going to be a close race. The Ag Commissioner is uh, a key opponent in the Democratic primary. She says, hey, look at me, I'm the only one who's been elected on the statewide level for many years. Um, is that something that you really think you're fighting when it comes to Democrats voting on August 23rd? Well, you take every candidate seriously, and certainly I do. Uh, I feel confident about the primary, though, but never complacent. I mean, we're in Jacksonville today, as we discussed, on to Madison, not exactly a metropolitan area, but important to me. And then we go to Tallahassee and then on to Pensacola. You know, campaigning in North Florida, I don't think Democrats have focused on it enough lately. And I think that's a big part of why we're going to have a victory come November. God willing, we win the primary. Serving in Congress right now and for the last few years, what's your view on how things have changed when it comes to women's rights, abortion rights, after what happened at the end of June with the Supreme Court ruling that wipes out Roe versus Wade and sends those issues back to the state? Well, it's been dramatic, to say the least. I mean, for about 50 years, Roe versus Wade was the law of the land and protected a woman's right to choose. The U.S. Supreme Court knocked that off the table, and all of a sudden, as you suggest well, this is thrown to governors now. These, this becomes a state rights issue. And so whoever we elect governor in November of this year will make the determination about a woman's right to choose. I've always been for a woman's right, right to choose. As a state senator, as your governor, I'm the only candidate in this race who's actually already vetoed an anti-abortion bill. And is almost six years now in the Congress, as you mentioned, I have a 100% rating from Planned Parenthood, Planned Parenthood, 100% rating from NARAL, very proud of that. And so I know I'm the candidate to protect women and women's rights. And the first thing I would do on the first day of the Christ administration, I'd sign an executive order saying we will protect a woman's right to choose statewide in Florida. One of the big statewide issues right now, and specifically in Jacksonville, is teacher pay. The state in these last few years has increased starting pay for teachers, but there's still this gap. How would you address that if given the chance as governor? Well, number one, I'm a public school kid. I graduated from St. Petersburg High School where I grew up. I graduated from Florida State University, one of our great universities across the state. And I'm the only candidate endorsed by the Florida Education Association and the American Federation of Teachers nationwide. So I'm very proud of those things. And I know that teachers are hurting. I know what's happening right now. We're the third largest state in America, yet we pay our teachers 49th out of 50 states. As you indicated in the introduction to this question, we have a problem with teaching and teach, treating our teachers well. And we can't afford to continue to do that. We're losing teachers by the thousands in Florida because of that disrespect. The DeSantis administration has not supported our teachers. They deserve support. Two of my three sisters growing up were public school teachers in Pinellas County. I'm ready to do it, and I'm eager to do it because they deserve it. 
Is tax increase the only way to do it? Uh, you know, that's something that Jacksonville is going through right now, coming up on August 23rd, voting on this local referendum about a, a one mil increase in order to pay better wages. It's also a time when so many people are dealing with, hey, inflation is hurting me. Uh, all sorts of things in the economy are kind of rough. Is raising taxes the way to get to that? Is now the time or something else need to be done? You don't have to raise taxes to pay teachers better and to give them more respect. We had the largest budget in the history of our state this year, $110 billion. That's an extraordinary amount of money. And how you spend your money shows what your values are. And De Governor DeSantis is not spending it on teachers, and he should be. It's the right thing to do. When I was governor, we had a $70 billion budget compared to 110, and we were paying teachers more per capita in the Christ administration than the DeSantis administration is right now. It's a priority for me. They deserve it. But we do have an affordability issue, too, as you suggest. Property insurance, it's going through the roof. The governor, about a month ago, had a special session on property insurance. It was special for the insurance companies. It was not special for the consumers. He made it harder for consumers to be able to get what they deserve from their insurance company should they have damage. Contrast that with Governor Christ, what I did. I had a special session on property insurance. We lowered property insurance rates by 10%. How much did Governor DeSantis lower them? Nothing. Nada. Why? Because he's campaigning across the country for President of the United States. Florida deserves better than that. That's why I'm running for governor. I love Florida. Florida's being torn apart with cultural wars by this governor. We need to come together and not be divided. You mentioned uh, environment. That is always something that is key in Florida. That shouldn't matter which side of the aisle you may vote on. We need to protect our environment in this awesome state, right? No, no doubt about it. It's critical. Listen, Florida's a beautiful state, and people come here. Tourism is our biggest industry because of her beauty. So if we neglect our environment, we hurt our economy. We can't afford to do that. All the people that work in restaurants, work in hotels, depend on the fact that we continue to get a good, robust tourist industry in Florida. What am I running against? Ron DeSantis, who attacks Disney World, of all things. Our largest employer in our state. It's unconscionable. And why? Because all they dared to do was to voice their opinion about a law that the governor wanted to have go into effect, and they th said they thought it was wrong, standing up for their right to free speech, the First Amendment of the United States Constitution, and the governor, who went to Harvard and Yale, ought to know a little bit about the Constitution, ignored it and went and attacked them, and it might cause a $2 billion tax on the residents of Orange and Osceola County in Central Florida. DeSantis says that's not the case, but it seems like we'll have to wait and see how that plays out a little bit, right? That's right. Well, the money's got to come from somewhere, and it's going to come from those taxpayers. So that's why it's wrong. Conflicting polls this week showed Nikki Freed leading in that race by four points in a UNF poll. The Christ campaign released an internal poll showing him ahead by 10 points or more. All right, we're pausing from politics for my conversation with Moez LeMayum, the new president at UNF. That's next on This Week in Jacksonville. With so many lawyers on television, how do you choose the right firm for you and your family? I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan, and here's my advice to you. Do your research. As America's largest injury firm, we have more lawyers than any other injury firm in the world. Last year alone, our team answered over two million of your calls and recovered over a billion dollars for our clients. Our goal is to get you as much as you deserve as quickly as possible. Results matter. Reputation matters. Morgan & Morgan. Silver or gold? At JSO, silver and gold is the difference between those with leadership experience and those without. All the major candidates running for sheriff have worn the gold badge, except Ken Jefferson. Jefferson never held a leadership position at JSO, which begs two questions. Why was Jefferson never trusted with leadership, and why would we trust him now to lead as sheriff? Ken Jefferson, a great TV personality without the experience needed to lead. Lowe's has what you need to protect and brighten your home. With exterior stains by Cabot and paint from HGTV Home by Sherwin-Williams. Save at Lowe's today. Visit firstcoastheartwalk.org to sign up for this year's event. Denny's all-time favorite Super Slam is back. 
Get bacon, sausage, eggs, hash browns, and buttermilk pancakes for only $6.99. Give your wallet a break and send it on a summer slamcation. The hottest deals are at Denny's, America's valued destination. With an Invisalign smile, everything clicks. And that class reunion becomes... Is that Anna? Invis is the number one doctor-recommended clear aligner and more predictable results. Invisalign. John Rutherford is fighting for Northeast Florida and getting the job done. He'll work to lower inflation and fight high energy prices by ensuring we make America energy independent again. Rutherford will help our economy grow by bringing our manufacturing jobs back from China and ensuring we buy American. Rutherford will always back our law enforcement and combat illegal immigration by securing our southern border. John Rutherford gets results. I'm John Rutherford, and I approve this message. At Farah and Farah, we specialize in accidents involving commercial trucks. Don't let the insurance company play around with your future. Call us. Vote 2022, Florida's primary. On-air results as soon as polls close. Alerts on every screen. Election coverage starts at 8 on News 4 Jax Plus. Then at 9 on Channel 4, in-depth breakdown. Looking at the issues and candidates important to you. Vote 2022, Florida's primary. Special coverage Tuesday night starting at 8 on News 4 Jax Plus And 9 on Channel 4, the local station. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville with Kent Justice. Moez LeMayum began his tenure as UNF's president August 1st. He invited us to his office this week to hear what his vision is at Jacksonville's Public State University. And I asked him specifically why he thinks he was chosen. Uh, thank you. That's a great question. I get this question a lot. And, and, and frankly, um, when this whole search started here, I was not looking at all. You know, really? we've been um, tenure uh, in, in another great university, University of South Florida, not very far from here, doing good things, starting great programs, embedded in the community. So um, we had no intentions. But um, um, we were um, heavily contacted by the uh, headhunters, and uh, oh they insisted which I'm so happy they did, and uh, started uh, doing some research about uh, UNF and about the community. And the, the one thing that uh, kept the expression, that kept coming back to my mind as I was reading and talking to some people, was like, wow, I did not know that about yeah. UNF. I did not know that about the Jacksonville region. And what I found um, the most um, compelling and attractive thing that is really both for UNF and for this great community is very solid foundations. UNF is a great university. The, the, my predecessors and the people who work day in, day out did a great job. But yet there are so many other great things that could be done. And that's a, a great position to be in, to come as the seventh president yeah. and not only work with the, with the uh, outstanding second to none faculty and staff here and change the lives of so many of these amazing students that uh, I've been hearing the story, but also the the, 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 this community is so welcoming. So, as I said, the stars were aligned. The fit was amazing. Uh, I've been now on the job for a little bit more than uh, two weeks and a couple of days and a few hours and loving every <laughs> second of it. So what is it uh, that you have in mind now that you've taken over? You started August 1st here at UNF. What's the vision for the students here at UNF? Yeah, that's a, that's a really um, a, a, a great question and the one, as, as uh, uh, you may expect, I get very often. And my immediate answer is, is really soon for me to um, articulate um, a sharp vision because the last thing that this university want or need and this community need is someone to come uh, with a vision pre-cooked and his or her briefcase like, you know what, this is where we're going for the next few years. I think that's a mistake and we're not going to make that mistake. So um, my commitment is to hit the ground listening. And, and while listening, learning about um, our institutions, talking to our wonderful internal stakeholders, incredible stories from uh, faculty and staff. When I ask questions, Kent, how long have you been here? You know, the answer is usually 17, 18, 20, 25, 30 years. That tells you something. I've been talking and shaking hands with students and uh, the incredible stories they've had. Uh, uh, more than 30% of our students 
are Pell Grant recipients, means that the poverty level or below, uh, a high percentage of them are first generation college students. No one yeah. in their families um, has a college degree. Um, talking to the community, and one of the things that really impressed me is their passion for UNF and the support they have for UNF. But with that passion and support comes expectations. And I need to understand the expectations. I need to understand the challenges here. I, I heard you maybe first day when you welcomed uh, some media members in, you said, I really want to talk to the students. Absolutely. I want the students to be involved in oh, setting the course and, and defining the vision for Absol UNF. Absolutely. They are the reasons we're here. They are our raison d'etre. That's why we're here and we keep reminding ourselves we're here because of the uh, students. We are in the best business, the business of changing lives. As I mentioned, uh, we uh, serve a population that uh, many of them come from uh, uh, a very difficult uh, financial background, uh, also not having uh, role models in their families, many of them, that they can um, uh, talk to them about their education, their future. We want to be their home here. We want to provide them with that great experience. And, and frankly, one of the mistakes I have committed in the past is um, every time we were thinking about great things for our students, we'll get with the team, close the door, and start brainstorming. Well, let me tell you, every time we got it wrong. So now we're doing it differently. We involve students. We ask them, what are the things that will engage them um, in, 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 in our campus so that this campus become even more vibrant? Uh, what are the challenges that they have w while studying here? What are their dreams? I want them to share with us their dreams and I want us to be part of these dreams and have a great experience, but also be ready for a great job at graduation or shortly after with the competitive salaries. The parents like the competitive right. salaries of the <laughs> equation. Yeah, of course. <laughs> President LeMay has shared more of his story with me, and I'll tell you, really interesting. He grew up in North Africa with no electricity. I want you to hear that story. So we've linked that part of our interview to news4jax.com, and then you're going to find it on the This Week in Jacksonville page. All right, Congressman Michael Waltz, he served in the War on Terror as a Green Beret. He's now serving as a Northeast Florida Congressman. His views on the latest news from Capitol Hill next on This Week in Jacksonville. Diane Michael and Lake Ray, two liberal politicians trying to hide it. Michael was an Obama-Biden Democrat, and Ray voted like one, supporting Charlie Crist's taxes and a Green New Deal to increase energy prices. Michael and Ray's campaigns are even being funded by Democrats and pro-abortion politicians. Diane Michael and Lake Ray, two downtown liberals we don't need. A conservative outsider, Chet Stokes, is a businessman, family man, and will fight for our values. A new Chevy is the smart way to hit the open road this summer. The smart way to road trip and seek new adventures. Go a little farther this summer in a new Chevy. Find new get up and go, find new roads. Enjoy the open road. Well-qualified buyers can get 0% financing or get $1,200 cash allowance on all 2022 Equinox models. See your Southern Chevy dealers. Leadership is about doing what's right and never backing down. When Governor DeSantis faced unrelenting attacks, he kept fighting for Florida, for freedom, for us. Floridians know we will not let anybody lock them down. He saved jobs. Every business in Florida has a right to operate. Children stayed in the classroom. We have to have schools open. And seniors got the care they needed. We focus protection on elderly people. Governor DeSantis never backs down. Tired of searching for a deal on a new RV? August 17th through the 21st, General RV is clearing out 2022 RVs and dropping prices during the summer closeout sales event. With travel trailers starting at just $16,999 and motorhomes starting at $75,995. Hurry in and save during the summer closeout sales event only at General RV. You can get your smile back today. At Affordable Dentures and Implants, we make high-quality tooth replacement affordable for everyone. 
So whether it's a single tooth, full dentures, or life-changing dental implants, we have an experienced dentist who can help you go ahead and smile. Click or call to schedule your new smile consultation today. Go ahead and smile. For TK Waters, serving others and giving back is a way of life. A husband, father, grandfather, and leader, TK shares our community values. With more than 30 years as a police officer, detective in chief, TK is the most experienced candidate for sheriff. He'll add officers to the street, foster greater trust through transparency and open communication, and ensure taxpayer money is always spent wisely. TK Waters, the trusted, experienced leader we need for sheriff. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville on Channel 4. A couple milestones led to a conversation with Congressman Michael Waltz this week. The U.S. Representative is not a fan of the new bill called the Inflation Reduction Act. The Republican says mostly that's because he doesn't believe it will reduce inflation. About a half dozen think tanks and bipartisan tax analysis groups have said it's going to do nothing to inflation. I mean, literally flat. Uh, over the next coming years. And I mean, I think just every American with common sense says, how do you spend another half trillion dollars from the government? How does that reduce inflation? The, the problem all along has been this massive government spending coupled with what I think has just been a completely asinine energy policy, this kind of war on American oil and gas. And that's why we have uh, record inflation. This is just going to make it worse. I read one of the elements of that IRA that they're talking about is to pump like $80 billion into the IRS to hire more people because yep. they say, hey, it will bring in $125 billion in revenue. Just by point of comparison, that is six times the IRS's current budget. Not double, not triple, six times. Uh, and that overall by personnel will double the size of the IRS. I mean, if we want to talk about, you know, law enforcement agents, how about we get them in our inner cities where crime's out of control? How about we get them down on the southern border where we're on track to have two million people cross into, uh, it, cross into the United States from all over the world? Uh, how about we do that? I think that would be a much more effective use of, uh, of our tax dollars. And, and just one final point on, on, on this bill. It also had $350 billion to go into green energy. Here's the problem with that. All of that money is gonna flow right over to China because guess who makes 90% of the world's solar panels, 70% of the world's wind turbines, controls 90% of the lithium that goes into the batteries that you need for storage, China, China, China. So this is just a massive infusion right out of our economy and right into theirs because we don't manufacture those things here. Congressman, your military background on top of just who you are and what's important to you. We talk about foreign policy and national security a lot of time. Yeah. Tell me how this week is going for you since it's one year since America left Afghanistan and really what we've seen is the Taliban took over the country again. Yeah, let's just kind of review the, you know, review the state of things in the one year since this disastrous Biden withdrawal. We have Americans that are still behind Taliban lines. By the way, both Biden and his Secretary of State Blinken told the world it was about 100 that were left behind. They've now told us, no, it was really eight times that much. It was 800. There's still Americans behind enemy lines. Our allies are being hunted down as we speak. Uh, the brother of one of my interpreters that I got out was just captured by the Taliban, tied up behind one of their trucks and drug around a village to death to send a message about ever working with Americans again. You have a massive famine, girls can't go to school, women can't go to work, and oh, by the way, you now have Al Qaeda back in Kabul, as proven by the recent attack on the leader of Al Qaeda, uh, Zawahiri, just like they were pre 9-11. And so as so many of us said, look, uh, if you do this, Al Qaeda, ISIS, the Taliban, they will rebuild again and they will attack the United States again. And the intelligence community is telling us this, is briefing us this now in Congress, that Al Qaeda and ISIS fully intend to hit us again in our homeland. You mentioned the administration. There seems to be a, a little bit of a battle here between Republicans and the administration and Democrats when it comes to what happened in the FBI search at Mar-a-Lago. Where do you stand on that? And I think a lot of people are saying, well, if somebody's Republican, then they just blanketly defend yeah. President Trump. Sure. Well, I think what has me so concerned is just, you know, the, the level of public trust 
in our Department of Justice, in the system, is going from bad to worse. Uh, after years of the Russia investigation that really turned up nothing, uh, after seeing notable leaders like, uh, like John Brennan, the former head of the CIA, James Clapper, the head of national intelligence, swear on national television that they had seen directly evidence uh, uh, that President Trump was basically an agent of Russia, but then turns out they swore <laughs> behind closed doors under oath that they had never seen so much thing. We've just seen this massive erosion of trust. So for the Department of Justice to now say, hey, trust us, we're not gonna release the affidavit. You know, we've, we've got uh, the goods on a former president and a possible presidential candidate. Look, we need transparency. They need to understand the broader damage that this is doing to our republic and our democracy. And I have to tell you, when I see Chinese, Russian, Iranian propaganda pointing to all of this and saying, look at what a mess American democracy is. That's why you need to side with us and not them. Uh, I just don't think we fully appreciate the damage that's being done. Do you have a concern from a national security perspective if classified documents were taken and shouldn't have been? Yeah, look, I mean, if there are classified documents and they weren't declassified by the president, and I've worked in a previous White House, I've seen that process, uh, and that is absolutely within his authority. But these were, uh, these were classified documents, and apparently they were. My question is, what happened between June when they were discussing these things, there was a subpoena, the FBI had full access, the president apparently talked to some of them and said, fine, you want an additional lock on the door, no problem. And they were working out what's releasable, what's not, what was declassified, what needs to go back. What happened eight weeks later that you now have to have this never before done in history raid on a president's home? Again, uh, we're, we're getting nothing in terms of answers from this Justice Department except, trust us, we got it. Uh, and I think the American people are demanding accountability. They're demanding transparency. And as I see more and more people losing trust in, in our federal law enforcement, uh, I'm going to continue to call for that. And a reminder for you, Election Day is Tuesday, and if you didn't vote early, then you can learn all about the races and candidates on the ballot. Just visit our News for Jacks voter guide. We've updated our homepage so you can easily find it right there. And our live coverage of Florida's primary begins Tuesday night, streaming at 8 p.m. That includes on News 4 Jacks Plus. Then we're online and on air starting at 9. Coverage continues through the 10 o'clock news and News for Jacks at 11 with results as they come in on newsforjacks.com. Next week, our Hand on Government segment includes results Results from the primary. Chris Hand is with us. Thanks for joining us today on This Week in Jacksonville. See why every day more people are choosing News 4 Jacks, Northeast Florida, and South Georgia's number one source for local news.